Aloha and welcome to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host, Lillian Kumik with Think Tech Hawaii. Today's show is The Olympics Go Vegan, Plant-Based Athletes Take Center Stage. I'm very excited to welcome my gorgeous guest, Donna Narona, a research specialist at Pittsburgh High School from Martini Martinez, California. California. Welcome, Donna, to the show. Aloha. Aloha. Hi, Lillian. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, thank you so much. The pleasure is all mine. I am very, very excited to have you on the show because we met just a few weeks ago and you were telling me how you uh, became vegan and have regained your health, uh, mm -hmm. lost a lot of weight along the way. So plenty to talk about today, Donna. May I ask that you uh, introduce yourself to the viewers? Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Donna Narana. I originally come from the Philippines. I came here 14 years ago. And about three years ago, I started a whole food plant-based diet, um, which was life-changing for me and my family as well. Is your family plant-based as well? They're, they're what we call plant strong. And my husband, actually, you know, he's had migraines for a long time. And when he became plant strong, it also, like, the migraines lessened so much, like, significantly for him. Really? I love that phrase, plant strong. I think I'm going to have to tell my husband about that mm -hmm. <laughs> because he is not vegan, although we live in a vegan home. Our home is all plant-based. Um, we don't have any leather furniture in our home, so we try to keep it very, um, very vegan. But he eats non-vegan food when we go mm -hmm. out. So I think I, I think I might be able to use this uh, vegan strong, yeah. plant-based strong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, awesome. Yeah. It's like meeting in the middle, like marriage, right? Like It's yeah. always like that way, yeah. Uh -huh. So Donna, I have to ask how and why you became vegan. Yeah, I became vegan um, because when I was pregnant, first with my firstborn in 2012, I suffered from what we call symphysis pubis or pelvic girdle pain, which basically means that my right, the right side of my pelvis moved and I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do any of like the daily stuff without severe pain. I couldn't even like on my bed, I can't even do this. <laughs> wow. I couldn't. Yeah. So... I had to be bed rested for a couple of months before and after my delivery. And then in 2016, it happened again. You know, um, with my firstborn, I gained like 65 pounds. With my secondborn, I tried to be very, very mindful about what I was eating, but I wasn't plant based yet. But in the third trimester, it happened again and I ballooned again. Um, and so, yeah, when I was bed rested, my husband had to actually put, we were like, we just bought this, this townhouse from another city. We were living in another city, but anyways, it's a two story house. And so he had to put the, one of our beds upstairs because I couldn't go downstairs and our entrance is upstairs. And so, yeah, I was bed rested. I was watching Netflix a lot. And they came, you know, across this documentary called um, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. And, okay. and the second one was Forks Over Knives. And um, this guy, this very well-known plant-based pioneer named T. Colin Campbell, really took my attention. He really got my attention. So I started listening to his audiobook, uh, The China Study. And that's, yeah. And after that, there was no looking back. Mm -hmm. That is an excellent uh, resource tool, actually, the China study. And it's funny that you mentioned you started watching documentaries, which um, ended up basically starting your, your plant-based journey. That, it, that happens a lot. A lot of people are turning vegan after watching some of these documentaries. I mean, they're very eye-opening, very informative and sometimes people can't actually handle watching them to the end because they are very very you know when they start showing footage of slaughterhouses or you know how animals are mistreated and stuff like that as well as you know the effect and the the footprint it leaves on the planet there there definitely is a lot to be 
said about you know wanting to go vegan or starting a plant-based diet so i do want to show um a picture of you because donna i have only met you a few weeks ago and you look mm -hmm. amazing oh thank you. you you do not look like you've had two children so here are some <laughs> photos there in, in particular the photo of when you were pregnant i'm not sure if you were this was with your first pregnant your first pregnancy or second pregnancy but there is a shot of you and you do definitely look a little bit heavier mm -hmm. than you are now. How much weight have you lost since your last pregnancy? I've lost a total of 65 pounds. My gosh. Yeah, it's you know, quite a bit of, it was significant weight, definitely. How, how tall are you, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I'm 5'1", so that was a lot so that, of weight on my body, yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely, yes. Well, I'm sure a lot of the viewers want to know, besides going plant-based, how did you lose all that weight? Tell us about what you ate or did you exercise? I mean, after, you know, just after giving birth, I assume you're not doing uh, any strict workouts, but how, how did you lose so much weight? Yeah, good question. So actually I started my plant-based diet like um, a few months already and I still wasn't losing weight. So I was getting frustrated about it. I mean, it, there was a little bit of weight, but not significant. And then I went back and watched the um, the Fat Sick and Nearly Dead again, where this guy was talking, Joe Cross was talking about um, going fasting. Um, so that's what I did. That's what triggered the weight loss was me going th three days of juice fasting. Um, and then I just like, you know, the toxins were just, you know, I was just getting rid of the toxins and it, it just, you know, it was like a domino effect after that. Um, and what I also did, so I did the fasting and after the fasting, um, I went on. So how I started my plant-based journey was I got rid of different food groups or meat groups one at a time. So it wasn't too much, but it was only also when I got rid of the dairy so the dairy, getting rid of the dairy, which was the last thing that I got rid of, which was funny because I thought it was going to be seafood coming from the Philippines. You know, I, I'm, you know, <laughs> yeah, so I, I am a big seafood fan, but it was actually the dairy that I was very hooked on. And that was really surprising for me. So, yeah, so the I, I was going to say, yes, I'm not surprised at all, Donna. Yeah. It def definitely the, the majority of people that find it hard um becoming completely plant-based do mm -hmm. do have trouble getting rid of the dairy but um, i'm going to come back to that in, in a moment because i think we all know by now that there is a substitute for any kind of dairy that you're hooked on whether it's cheese butter yogurt ice cream um, mm -hmm. really there there is a, a plant-based milks there's so much out there now so many you know plant-based products that really there is no excuse because you don't have to give up dairy tasting products when you go vegan. So, oh, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, like my family, my my kids. That's how I introduce plant based with them is using a lot of alternatives that they also, you know, would enjoy. Mm -hmm. When you say you did the th three days of juice fasting, first of all. You did three days fasting, then say in a week, then were you eating regular food for the other four days in the week? Then did you start fasting again or? No, how, it was just a one-time thing. Uh, oh, so okay. that was October 2017. I did a three-day fasting the last week of October. And then after that, I just started eating whole food plant-based. So a lot of mm -hmm. green. Um, and I tried to get rid of the the white stuff, the vegan, you know, the vegan, vegan junk food. And yeah, so but I was basically eating regular plant based food I was eating. And then I tried to like do at least a day a month uh, fasting just to kind of um, re reset my, my digestive system. So yeah, so that that practice really helped. And also, when you were asking about the exercise, I, I used to enjoy a lot of running prior to like what happened to me. And so I started to go back to that. Um, yeah, so, but now it's more my family and I, we do a lot of hiking. So that's our, 
our mode of our main mode of exercise is hiking. Uh, we do like recreational biking together. We enjoy a lot of outdoor stuff together. Yeah, I love how you've um, brought your family into this new. A journey of yours that's fantastic you do have pictures of your your beautiful family there they um, are. spending yeah. time out out in, in the outdoors where's this photo taken this one was in flagstaff um it's called walnut canyon which was like a cliff uh, dwelling for ancient um americans like native americans so we were in the sedona area in spring of this year awesome that, that that's so great all right, I have a question for you, Donna, and I think this is one of the biggest misconceptions that uh, people have about vegans. Do you lack energy on a plant-based no. diet? Oh my gosh, no, my dad, he is so proud of me. And he would like tell people like, her energy is like way up. Like, and I used to not like do a lot of things around the house. My husband is very domesticated. Um, God bless him. Like, you know, I really have him, like I, I'm blessed with, I, I'm pampered basically with like stuff around the house. But when I started going plant-based, I started contributing more <laughs> to like just things that we do around the house. I mean, cooking more, just, yeah, doing stuff. And yeah, my dad really notices that because he lives with me. My mom and dad lives with us. Awesome. That, that's great to hear because I do want to talk today about some vegan athletes mm -hmm. uh, that, are, that are actually competing or have already competed in this year's Tokyo Olympics. So it is a fact that there are vegan athletes out there. They are very, very strong, very successful um, sports people as well so here are some of the uh, awesome plant-based athletes that have competed this year there's team usa uh soccer player alex morgan mm -hmm. who has won three olympic gold medals and a bronze medal at this year's tokyo olympics in soccer um, canadian skateboarder mickey papa also competed this year a uh, Polish-American skater, Amelia Brodka, has been vegan for 10 years. There's a couple of Aussies in this year's um, Olympics that are vegan. Australian sprinter Morgan Mitchell ran in her second Olympic Games. And she, when asked how she became vegan, she said that her now ex-boyfriend showed her some documentaries that turned her instantly vegan. No surprise there, as, uh -huh. as Donna, you have mentioned, that, that sort of was the segue into you starting your journey. Um, by the way, if there's anyone watching this show and, and does want to watch some, some uh, documentaries about the vegan lifestyle and plant-based diet, I really do recommend Cowspiracy. Uh, Dominion is another one. Dominion is going to be a shocking one. This is uh, likely to if not turn you vegan, at least think about what it is you're putting in your on your plate and where it came from. Very shocking um, footage that that is very also informative, and it just it it's just shows a lot of uh, what happens behind the scenes in the in the animal world. Um, another documentary I, I highly recommend, which has really um been a game changer literally and that's the name of the documentary it's called oh, the yes. game changes mm -hmm. this is one that a lot of people might rec uh, remember that that you can watch on um you can see on netflix and the other one i was going to say is what the health what the health is an awesome awesome documentary as well um so so many documentaries out there we will continue on with our talk about the vegan athletics. Donna, I am going to ask that we take a quick break uh, mm -hmm. for some messages and to the viewers, please stay tuned for more of Lillian's Vegan World. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, 
and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha. Welcome back to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host, Lillian Kumik with Think Tech Hawaii. I'm also a vegan chef, recipe developer, and author of Hawaii, A Vegan Paradise. My awesome uh, vegan cookbook is available on Amazon, stores all around Hawaii. There are over 120 plant-based recipes and lots of Hawaiian favorites that I've veganized. Um, I had the honor actually last week of cooking for another one of Hawaii's legendary chefs, Chef Alan Wong. It was an amazing experience. He sat at my table for one of my seven course vegan dinners uh, with his wife. It was his first vegan course, full course, and he loved it. There's a little video I took of us kind of goofing around, but uh, do check it out. Here's the video with Alan Wong. <laughs> so I can continue on as like I normally do. It has been an absolute honor meeting you and to have you sitting at my table, honestly, it's for me a big deal. So thank you so much. I hope you um, enjoy this and tell all your 10,000 million followers about <laughs> fabulous oh, thank you very much. Everything was wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so that was my little uh, dining experience with the awesome chef Alan Wong and it, it was definitely definitely an honor to have him sitting at my table. So back to my my beautiful guest, Donna Nerona from California. Donna, welcome back again to the show. Thank you. <laughs> what have you been cooking up? Tell us about what you and your family, your plant strong husband and, and children eat on a regular basis. So on a regular basis for protein, we use a lot of mushrooms, we use a lot of tofu and lentils and beans. We had like, you know, in the pandemic, we bought like big sacks of <laughs> all the beans, <laughs> different kinds of beans. And yeah, my, um, my kids, they like tofu. And so that's what I switched to, um, you know, instead of using chicken and the other proteins, that what, that's mm -hmm. what we use. And then I use like, you know, we make falafels. We we like to we like to go to to try out different cuisines. So Japanese, Mexican, um, even even Mediterranean. And so we just make it plant based. Awesome. The Mediter Mediterranean cuisine has actually a lot of uh, awesome vegan dishes. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, do you consume oil? No. So. I don't, when I cook, I don't consume oil just because of the research and, you know, the, the articles that I've read about it, it's not good for the body for so many reasons. So I use water or I dry, you know, I, I dry, what do you call, saute. My husband, though, um, he prefers with oil. He feels like the taste is different. And so that's kind of where I respect his opinion as long as he's plant strong. So, yeah. And then eventually, actually, I was very surprised because he told me that he sees himself going full plant-based in three to five years. That's what he said. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's great. My husband still claims he could never go <laughs> vegan, but you know, I, I never I never say never when it comes to the plant-based diet. Right. And, Especially with you as a chef. I mean, how well, lucky he, are you? Yeah. My husband eats probably some of the best food on the island. Vegan exactly. Food, but yeah. <laughs> so he's kind of spoiled. But that that's awesome. Um what about so you mentioned you don't you don't uh, eat processed food uh, junk food which is great I've been known to indulge every now and again yeah I, actually, I won't I won't lie <laughs> no I won't I mean to be honest Lillian, I was 
I was more disciplined at the very beginning. I was whole food plant based all the way like the first year or two. And then when we go on vacations and my husband, he loves chips and my kids, they love chips. So I, you know, like I've kind of um, given, you know, like I, I do eat it. Uh, I, I need to do better though, because I, I, I saw myself doing better before. So I need to be more on track with that. Mm-hmm. Well, you look, like I said before, you, you look amazing. So I think whatever you're doing, you're, you're definitely doing it right. And one of my mantras is moderation over deprivation. Mm-hmm. I think that when you really are so hard on yourself and um, set yourself up for disappointment, I think that can can really kind of um, steer you off the, the, the path. So don't be too hard on yourself if you're just starting a, a plant-based diet. But again, there's all these things. I mean, I, I do consume oil, extra virgin o- olive oil. I, I cook with it a lot and and do dress my salads and stuff with a lot. So there's there's people that do, don't do oil, people that do, don't do sugar. What about alcohol, Donna? So alcohol, I typically don't drink, but this summer I've been to like, I have friends who like to drink. And so I've been drinking, <laughs> I've been enjoying some uh, rosé and um, some beers. So yeah, I mean, it's it's not typically what I do, but like what you said, like moderation, right? Instead of deprivation. So that's what I've been doing. Like I've been enjoying social time with some friends and yeah, eating, you know, alternative food, like alternative snacks. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, I love to, I live in Hawaii. I mean, cocktail hour is not going to be the same without a drink in your hand. <laughs> so exactly. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't blame Hawaii for my drinking habits, but I, I definitely am a <laughs> wine drinker. Um, I enjoy a glass of wine with dinner every night. So yeah, definitely moderation over deprivation. And as long as you, you know, counteract that with eating, you know, really good food, whole foods, plant-based, get your nutrients in, get your daily exercise in, One thing, talking about fasting, I am actually an intermittent faster and I fast for 20 hours every day. Oh, wow. Really? Mm, Yes. I've been doing, yeah, I've been doing that for about 10 years now. So I eat about four hours a day. It's actually less. I'm not grazing for four hours, but I do start my first meal at 5 p.m. and then nothing after 9 p.m. So I have found that for me, fasting, I have had uh, guests on my show talking about intermittent fasting. It it is a game changer. Fasting is something that I I really recommend people look into because it can, it gives your body time to heal itself. When you're constantly trying to digest food, your Mm -hmm. body's working overtime to, you know, do all that and it doesn't have time to rest which is mm-hmm. what your body needs to heal. So um, intermittent fasting is another thing that people can look at if, if they're really, you know, interested in getting their, you know, their, their food and diet on, a, on the right track. Yeah, I agree. So, Actually, we, my husband and I um, do that. We do 8 16 Yeah, and it's, wonderful. you know, I, I did 5 19 but it wasn't because I have little kids and if they don't see me eating, they ask, why am I not eating? So I mm-hmm. had to like readjust it. But yeah, definitely I agree with you. Intermittent fasting. My sister actually, who's trying to lose weight also has been seeing some results with IF. So right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's something um, still a, quite, a, quite a lot of people still haven't heard about intermittent fasting. So definitely look, look into it. If you're interested in cleaning up your diet, losing a bit of weight along the way, although it's not a diet, definitely Mm -hmm. not a diet. It's just Mm -hmm. about um, eating within a a feasting window a certain amount of hours every day and then letting your body rest for the the other hours. And when you think about it, if if you're sleeping for on average eight hours a night, just skip breakfast and you're already you know, you're already fasting without even thinking about it for 12 to 16 hours. So it's not very hard to do. And I'm one of those people that think, honestly, breakfast is not necessary. 
Mm-hmm. That's just me, just my opinion. I'm not a dietitian or nutritionist, and I don't know what your lifestyle is like. Depending on your lifestyle, I think people tend to eat breakfast out of habit mm-hmm. rather than, um, you know, to to eat because they're hungry. So anyway, there's lots of um, so many athletes and congratulations to all the athletes that performed. U.S. basketball player Diana Taurasi, um, Jamaican-born heavyweight boxer Siobhan Clark, Tamara Thibault, Montreal-based vegan boxer, fell just one win shy of a medal. So congratulations to all the plant-based athletes who, who show the world that um, you still have all that energy and strength, even if you're on a plant-based diet. Donna, I, we are going to start wrapping up the show. Would mm-hmm. you like to leave a message with our viewers? Yes. Um, you know, take care of your health. It's always a choice what they put in in their mouth. You know, there's so many marketing, so many commercials, but at the end of the day, it becomes a choice. And I hope for you and your family, you will make a healthful choice. There's so many literature, so many, so many resources like Lillian's YouTube show that are available for people to to really maximize and, and be educated. So my hope is that you and your family will start considering a health, a healthful, a plant-based diet, plant-strong diet, because it's such a blessing, not only for your family right now, but for many generations to come. Absolutely. Perfectly said, and I couldn't agree more. And if you're thinking about pre-workout snacking, getting back to the athletes, stick to light carbs, bananas, dates, and apples. Um, Veg News, an awesome uh awesome site where you can get a lot of information from vegnews.com also recommends tart cherries are a good source of energy and antioxidants for inflammation reduction while bananas fight muscle fatigue and prevent soreness Um, if you're sipping on water and uh, then tend to drink a lot of sugary uh, energy drinks cut them out go for coconut water which keeps you hydrated with electrolytes while fighting fatigue post-workout snacking Eat within an hour. It's beneficial due to food's power to rebuild, restore, and rejuvenate overworked muscles in the body. Um, Again, thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope that you uh, gained something from Donna's journey. I thank my guest, Donna, and look forward to seeing all of you viewers again on another episode of Lillian's Vegan World. Stay safe and aloha.